Hey everybody, uh, thank you for joining. Uh, I know it's the stroke of 2 p.m. on the East Coast. I'm not sure where everyone's joining from, but uh, we'll go ahead and get this thing started uh, once we get everybody trickled in. So um, as people start to join throughout, feel free to get situated and comfortable. Um, the thing we wanna do too is once you join, uh, if you look on the right hand side in the go to webinar plat or the the little toolbar uh, you're going to see two uh, two sections one of them is questions the other one is chat we're going to be monitoring both throughout so as you uh, get situated at your desks etc uh, or comfortable wherever you guys are at feel free to drop any questions or comments or say hey what's up guys Ooh, hello miami um Perfect example, um, Alfonso, thanks for dropping that in there. I wish I was in Miami right now because it's not a pretty day out here and I love South Florida. So thanks for joining us today. Um, feel free to drop any of your questions that you do have. Feel free to drop any comments in the chat, whatever. We're gonna be monitoring these things throughout. Plus at the end of this, we're also gonna be going through a lot of Q&A. So this is a great forum for you to get whatever questions you have out there. Feel free to ask away, there's no dumb question. Um, again, we'll try and get to absolutely every single one of them. So as people start to join and trickle in, we'll, we'll give everybody about probably another minute or two. Um, like I said, feel free to drop a little hello, what's up in the, uh, in the question section and, uh, and we'll get rocking. I'm gonna mute myself for two seconds, grab a water so I don't sound like a, uh, uh, a choking frog. So give me two secs and uh, we'll get this thing started. All right, I'm back from getting water. Um, perfect, ah, sweet, we got some folks folks cruising in. Castle Window folks, always a pleasure. Love you guys. And Atlanta, Christian, how we doing? That's an awesome city, good, good times there. I used to have an office in Ponce, so very big fan. Um, sweet, so, Without further ado, I think we can start getting this thing kicked off. We're gonna do just some quick introductions, uh, talk to you a little bit about what the Leap Academy series is designed to do, and then we're gonna dive into today's topic, which is going to be our, um, our contracts and best practices. So first things first, again, the Leap Academy, if you guys, this is the first one that you're attending. The purpose of these things is twofold. So. One of them is really designed specifically, or excuse me, on one hand, it's really designed specifically to, to give whether you're a, a, a new customer, a prospective customer, or if you're an existing lead customer, it's, a, it's designed to give you an insight into the new features and get a better understanding of what you can do with the tool itself. Um, we like to go into all the detail possible just to show you where you can fundamentally shift your business, smooth out some kinks if you're already using the tool, or just honestly evolve and level up. So this series and this, this specific tool is designed to uh, allow you to leverage Leap to really, um, to really grow and shape your business. So what we're gonna be doing, this is the second one. The first one that we did was on our secure payment capture feature. Uh, this is the second one, obviously, we're gonna be focusing on contracts today, but throughout the next year, we're gonna be doing systematic and periodic updates and, and, and new versions of the Leap Academy uh, on every single possible feature uh, that makes up our app. So we're gonna be doing a number of different things. Feel free to reach out to us if there's something that you really truly wanna hear. We're always open to suggestions from customers or prospective customers and uh, we can start shaping future series based on that. So the goal of this is to not only go through the content and the details, but also to bring up best practices and invite any one of our power users uh, to actually speak on these. So 
that's what we um, that's what we love doing. I mean, if if you're going to hear from anyone, you want to hear from one of your peers on how this is working inside their business. So. Speaking of which brings me to my next point. Um, today we're going to be focusing on the contracts and the best person possible to get to, to, to speak on this matter is actually our founder and CTO, Steve Simsel. So Steve, if you want to just jump in and say hi real quick, we're going to go into Steve's story and his bio a little bit more in a few, um, but it's always good. Steve, say hi to everybody. Um, hi, everybody. Really excited to have you today. Hey, can you hear me cool. loud and clear? We can hear you loud and clear. All right, great. Awesome. So again, guys, we're really stoked to have Steve with us today. Um, sorry, I said stoked. I'm Southern California, so silly vernacular like that will come out. But uh, we're really pumped to have Steve with us today. He's uh, he's really a unique guy uh, in in not only his his history and his story, but just his ability to develop and his talents. It's I've been in the tech world, and I'll go back to this throughout our, our, our conversation today. Um, I've been in the tech world for about 15 years, working specifically with private equity firms on startups and turnarounds. So I've seen a lot of really amazing dev teams and um, a lot of really talented individuals. And Steve truly is one of those that not only can do the dev side and be extremely technical and probably do things that even myself and others uh, on this call probably have no comprehension of what he's doing. Um, but the beauty of that is he can also talk to people. You know, he's also been at the kitchen table speaking with, um, speaking with your customers, you know, speaking with his customers as well. And he, he's extremely well versed in the business operations uh, that are involved with any home improvement or home services company. So really excited to have you here today. Thanks so much for doing this, Steve. I know you've got crazy schedule so uh again kudos. Oh, I enjoy, thanks for joining i enjoy us. doing this thanks for having me oh, that's fantastic thanks man so as we go through you guys here's what i want you to do we're going to drop a poll in real fast um so feel free we've got enough people on here feel free to chime in what we're looking for today is we really want to understand before we dive into everything what are you guys currently using for your your contracts um whether you use paper contracts, whether you use uh, you know Adobe or PDF templates, whether you're using an e-signature platform like Adobe Sign or um, or DocuSign or any one of those, um, or Write Signature is another one. Feel free to chime in and let us know exactly what you're currently using. The focus of today, we're going to address every single one of these. If you're already really cool and using Leap, which again we're a slight bit biased here, but uh, feel free to chime in and let us know exactly what it is. We'll give everybody about 30 seconds left. We're at about 82% finishing this poll. Um, thank you guys for being so diligent about this. Love it. Keep going. Come on. We're at 87. There we go. 90%. So we'll give it another five seconds. You're going to miss out. Three, two, one. All right, cool. We can close it. So we got 92%. Thank you so much for filling that out. You guys really appreciate it. Um, we're gonna, like I said, go through each and every one of those different pieces as we go through today's today's presentation. So uh, first things first, here's the overview of what we're gonna talk about. So number one first thing we have to address is what's the state of the industry? Um, a lot of the trends that we're facing right now are gonna obviously shape the necessities of a tool like Leap. Um, how you use contracts and all of that is really gonna be shaped and dependent on who you're interacting with, what the industry growth looks like, and really how things are evolving, so trends, patterns, et cetera. The next thing we're gonna take a look at is we're gonna take a look at how people are traditionally um, and even currently using uh, contracts, so what methods. Um, and then from there, we'll show the difference between what traditional methods are and then what the methodology and what uh, LEAP actually does to counter a lot of the different errors and, 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 and bottlenecks that we see with traditional methods. So we'll, we'll take a look at what LEAP does and why we're so drastically different. Um, the interview with the rock star, you guys got a chance to meet Steve for a hot second, but we're really going to go into why Steve is such a superpower in the space and really why he is so insightful and, and somebody that we should really all look to to answer a lot of the questions. I mean, he's been there, done that for well north of a decade now and has, uh, has really deeply involved himself in this industry space. So he's, he's very well versed in a lot of these topics, which is why, again, we're so pumped to have him with us. And then last but not least, like I said, in that question section in your toolbar, drop all your questions. We want to make sure that we get to anyone and everyone by the end of this and make sure that no one's left hanging. 
Um, just so you guys know as well, we are going to be reaching out to each and every one of you. One of the things that's really tough to do, and I know this is going to be a question that's brought up every single time, to discuss pricing, things like that, Leap works on a tiered pricing structure. So we like to get into that when we go through a one-on-one -on -one demo. It's very easy for us to learn about your business and quickly answer that question um, based on your, you know, your number of reps, your, um, the size of your company, what features and functionality you guys are looking to use, et cetera. So there's a lot of different components that our, our reps can easily get to. Really, we love to learn about you first, put together a, a plan that fits you guys perfectly, and then at that point, inform you and educate you on exactly what it can do and, and, and how it's going to plug in and what the cost is going to be. So that's one of the things, feel free to ask away, but it, it's really tough to get into, especially in a forum like this. So we, we're going to be reaching out to each and every one of you individually. Um, existing customers, well, obviously, you know where you're at, um, but we're going to be reaching out to anyone who's, who's new to this uh, and, and talking through that with you guys individually. So without further ado, let's jump right in. So like I said, the first thing that we need to do is we need to understand the industry that we live in. So there's a lot of trends and patterns, and a lot of that has to do with who's buying homes and who's purchasing home, home improvement. So when we look at this, this is a slide that we commonly use on a lot of our materials. And, and, and it, it's predominantly because it speaks to volumes to where this industry is. So right away, you can see if 50% of all small size and home services companies are using manual, manual methods, Again, my background in the tech world, it's, I will tell you, this space is about 20 years behind in technology. So a lot of the methods that we use day to day, while they work, there is a better way to do it, and there's a lot of benefits that come from it. Some of them are just not realized because you don't see them unless you do them. Um, but we're going to speak to a lot of that today. And really, at the end of the day, the other thing we have to recognize is that the person buying the house you know, is absolutely changing. Um, so that brings us to our next slide, which when we look at it, not only is our industry booming, um, I mean, there's a lot of growth. Everybody who's looked at their, their home equity uh, can attest to this. I mean, there, there's a tremendous value in our economy right now, and it's definitely growing uh, day over day. But what a lot of that has done is, you know, and I know everybody has the millennials working for them, or there might be, um, you know, some, some younger business owners on this call as well. You look at it, and the, and the pattern for a lot of new homeowners has been, you know, fresh out of college about 10 years ago, a lot of folks were faced with a really tough economy. So it was tough for them to pay their loans, get a high-paying job because the market was really difficult. They're just now starting to come into those higher-paying roles, and you have this huge urban flight from the city out of the rental markets and into the burbs buying homes. Um, so a lot of the new buyers are these millennial categories. You know, over 36% of all new home purchases in 2017 were made by millennials. So you see this shift um, and that number, if you look at 2016 and 20, or 2015, excuse me, um, has been growing one to 2% year over year. So it went from 35, 36, et cetera, and the pattern is continuing simply because again, there's that shift in home ownership and salaries, et cetera. The other thing to note with this is we also have to look at the stock and the inventory of homes in the US. I believe the last time I looked at the research for this, it was somewhere in the ballpark of like homes right now, the average, the average age of home was built, I believe in the late 60s to mid 70s. So when you think about that, a lot of these homes are basically freestanding time capsules. There's a lot of things that still need to be done to make these things relevant and current and appealing to the new buyer. The flip market is huge because of that, and that's why there's so much happening with like HGTV, HGTV, et cetera. So with all that happening, and with all of this, uh, you know, these new home buyers coming from a younger perspective, we also have to understand the difference in how they interact with us. Um, so this is actually a really cool stat: um, is that 82% of consumers look for immediate response, especially when it comes from marketing and sales. So if they take action on something, which Everybody on this call, I guarantee, has a very proactive website, likely has a call center that reaches out to their leads immediately or instantaneously, and a very proactive sales force. So when you look at this, all of your marketing and all of your, you know, all of your, your top of funnel efforts are really designed to feed this, this behavior, to really, to really cater to it. So if 
your consumer is constantly or demanding this immediacy or this momentum, which is a theme that we're going to come back to quite a bit throughout this conversation, is you have to capitalize on that momentum. Otherwise, you're leaving deals on the table. And the last thing you want to do is raise your cost per lead. Again, the other half of my title is marketing. I'm a giant nerd for, for data. And part of this has to do with capitalizing on that momentum so that you can lower your cost per acquisition. The better you can lower that figure, the more profitable you guys are per deal. So again, the whole purpose of this is going to show how it's not just one or the other. You have to have the full package. Otherwise, you're leaving deals on the table. So now let's take a look at some of the ways that we're going to do this. And I'm going to bring Steve into this conversation as well so that we can go back and forth. He obviously has been in this space quite a long time, so he can speak to this quite a bit. Um, so these are the three methods that we see typically happening within the organizations that we speak with, as well to just anyone that you meet with at a show, we have, we have conversations with, et cetera. Uh, this, is, this is common practice. Again, we looked at the poll for everybody that filled this out. Uh, I mean, it's basically just reiterated by that. There's a lot of folks using paper, a lot of folks using PDF, and a lot of folks using some sort of e-sign platform. Um, and we're going to talk through the strengths and weaknesses of each. So, Steve, bringing, bringing you into the conversation, um, one of the things that we see a lot of, especially, especially with companies coming on the leap, is they're using manual methods like paper. Um, the three main things that we typically see is, as, as the detractors from this is they're extremely generic. You know, they're, they're not something that you can customize on the fly. Obviously, if it's printed, you're going to have to use white out or scratch things out to maintain that real professional appeal or appearance. It's got to be something that's pre, you know, predetermined, printed, you're in the field, go. Um, the other hard part about this, too, is you're constantly having to fill out data. You know, you're constantly having to fill out that customer's name, address, and phone. You're constantly having to match different items coming from your estimate. So, Steve, walk me through your experience with paper. I know when you first cut your teeth in this space, paper was something that you were going into the field with. So. I'm going to shut up for a second, pass this off to you. Help me understand what this was like for you. Yep. So when I uh, started um, with a company in the Baltimore, Maryland area selling um, home improvements, exterior remodeling, remodeling specifically, uh, they trained me on carbon copy contracts, which look exactly like your little thumbnail that you have up um, on, on the slide. And we would have a different form for each type of product that we sold, whether windows, siding, roofing, gutters, et cetera. And we would have one of those forms. Uh, so like if I was selling a multi-product, we would have to fill out one of those forms for each each project um, or each category of, of product. And then uh, it was a lot of double data entry. So I'm right, like, I have to write the customer's name at the top of every single one of them. It became very redundant, um, you know, because you have to do it in separate forms, or at least we did, because different crews install different types of jobs. So you want to make sure all the information is on each individual contract. Um, I, I me personally didn't like that because um, I have been in sales pretty much since I could work. Uh, my first sales job was at Best Buy actually, and in in sales they you know they always say how keep it keep the momentum going, keep the energy going, keep the um, customer engaged, keep the yeses flowing. And when I would uh, you know get the sale and the customer says okay let's do it, and then I'm writing up a carbon copy contract, it kind of broke that momentum. So I would, okay, well, give me a second to write this up. And then I go back to write it up. And then uh, the customer just disengages from the sale. They're like, okay, well, I'm going to go start dinner or I'm going to uh, go give the kids a bath or mow the lawn or whatever it was. And I was like, okay, well, I'll call you when I need you. And then, you know, it, just that whole process was kind of archaic. So, you know, using like with Leap, obviously we're going to talk about Leap, but you can make that where that contract pretty much just auto populates, very minimal inputs that you would fill out and keep that momentum going um, through the entire contract process. And then, of course, with paper, you, you have the sloppy handwriting, you have to turn it in, all those other things that go along with it. Yeah, for those of you on this, again, going back to the, going back to the question of the chat section, Put a little plus one in there if you've ever gotten a contract back from one of your sales reps. You look at it and you go, I have no idea if that's a one, you know, a seven, uh, an L, or, or, or whatnot. You know, how, how annoying is it for you guys when you go to, to try and, and read that handwriting and it's the chicken scratch of a doctor on a, you know, on a prescription form? So, again, it's, it's, it's something that we commonly hear as a pain point when customers inquire about LEAP. Again, going back to paper, the, one of the hardest things about it, like Steve said, is 
it takes time to fill these things out. You have to carry a small library with you. The other thing that we hear too, especially going back to the previous Leap Academy session that we, that we worked on, is one of the problems that you have with paper is there's a lot of really vital information written down on that form. So if for some reason that paper gets lost, oftentimes, and this is, this is a big no-no for PCI compliance, oftentimes people are writing down credit card numbers, et cetera, on these carbon copy forms, and now there's not one version of it floating around, there's four versions of it floating around. So again, when you look at that, there, there's a lot of compliance issues that also get associated with paper that theoretically put your, your, your business in a, in, a, in, a, in a position of liability. So moving on from paper, let's start talking a little bit about PDF templates. So another fun thing that we always hear is I'm already digital. And while PDFs are, are a wonderful step up from paper in the way they look, the appearance to the customer, really at the end of the day, it's paper 2.0. Because if you're going through any one of these templates, they're very rigid. In order to edit them, you have to have a copy of the original Word document. You know, if you're using like Excel or something like that, oftentimes you can have the Excel converted over to a PDF. But if you start messing around with any of the cells or anything like that, you also run the risk of getting error messages because formulas can get corrupted pretty easily. So one of the things that we often find, especially when people are using PDF templates, is while it does look a little better to the customer, you often still have to print them to sign them. So at the end of the day, you've basically just got one thing done and that's effectively eliminated the issue of bad handwriting. Um, but again, when you look at it, there's still a risk from double data entry. There's still that issue of safety and security because you've printed the form out. <laughs> uh, and then at the end of the day too, it also takes time to fill these things out. So. Unfortunately, we go back to what Steve was mentioning earlier of that disengagement from that customer who you've just spent likely an hour, two hours going through the trenches, earning their trust, and really developing just this bond and momentum that then, poof, you hand them control on a silver platter. So moving along, I don't think we need to hammer this point home too much. Like I said, PDF templates are typically paper 2.0. So next thing I want to talk about, and this is, this is you know, we, we often, you know, and I'm sure everybody on this call in some way, shape, or form, when selling like, you know, any one of your jobs, offer some sort of like good, better, best. So of the alternative methods, the e-sign process is probably the best of them. However, you know, again, one of the things I want to do too is, Steve, I'm going to pass it over to you because I'm sure no one wants to hear my voice the entire time, but walk us through some of the reasons why um, you've seen this as, 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 a, as a good option, but not the end point, not the best option. Right. So when, again, I just go back from like my personal experience. So when I would do in-home sales, we would have the carbon copy contracts. Eventually we had a, a form of that editable PDF that we could use. And, you know, we would send the customer the document and most of the time they would uh, print it out, sign it, and then scan it and upload it back to us. As a matter of fact, we sometimes would even instruct them if they didn't have a scanner, we would, we had a, another email that we would send them an email template that would have instructions on how to download a PDF scanner app on their phone. So they could basically just take a picture of it and scan it back to us. So these e-sign things make that a lot easier. So if you need a document um, to be signed and you don't want to have to drive all the way back out to the customer's house, you can send them like an Adobe sign or a DocuSign and they can sign it. So it's fantastic for change orders or, you know, when you need a, a remote signature. Um, however, we see a lot of this too, you guys. Uh, we, we see a lot of this really helpful, especially when, when doing rehash internally. So, uh, some of our customers will have a call center. That call center will pull up a lot of the old estimates that were completed and say, hey, Steve, you know, we quoted you on Windows. It didn't look like you bought them. So what if we drop the price a grin and uh, get the deal going today? Does that work for you? Yeah, please. I want the Windows. Cool. I'm going to send you a contract. Go ahead and sign that. These yeah. formats are unbelievably successful for that. 
Yeah, it's great for that, but so like as an in-home sales rep, which is you know in home improvements, you have to meet the customer face to face. You're usually sitting at the kitchen table and going over the deal. The e-sign really didn't work for me because it would I basically lost control of the entire selling process. Like I wanted to be able to go over line item by line item and the contract, explain away any questions that the customer might have came up with at the time of signing the contract, and I'm basically controlling that flow of okay, sign here, initial here, this explains this, this explains that, etc. Uh, when you do these types of e-sign platforms and you're sending to the customer, you basically are allowing them to open up your contract and view it on their own device. And there's just something that's like awkward if you're like, okay, well, let me go through that with you. And I'm on their computer screen scrolling on, you know, their phone trying to explain away all the different contract points so they could just click that little e-sign button and sign it. So if I'm sitting with the customer, this is actually um, more of a burden than going ahead and have them signing a paper copy because at least with the paper copy, I can control control that process. This one I cannot. I am sending it off into cyberspace. It comes to their email and now they have all the control when they sign it. And then there's times it goes, okay, well, I got it in my inbox. I'll sign it when we're ready or my husband comes home or whatever it is. And then you're like, oh, okay, you kind of left there holding the bag. So there's pros on this one, but I think the cons of using just that um, outweigh the pros, in my opinion. Totally. Totally. And like I said uh, earlier, one of the things that we want to focus on today is not condemning every single one of these. It's just recognizing the strengths and weaknesses. The other side of it, too, is just the value in having the total package. Again, e-sign platforms like this are an extremely beneficial tool, but they really don't do everything that's needed. So oftentimes, if this is the one thing that you lean on, you're banking on a couple of those different fundamental features but you're missing out on a much bigger picture. So let's keep going through this and let's, let, let's talk about some of the next steps. So you've seen what traditionally was done. You've seen what it looks like through the poll that the majority of, of you guys are doing right now, but let's start talking a little bit about what you can do. Um, so what I'm gonna do is a little bit different. Instead of just looking at a bunch of uh, thumbnails on a slide, I'm actually gonna walk you through a really quick overview of how contracts work within LEAP. Uh, you'll be able to see a little bit of the estimate stuff, a little bit of the, um, you know, a little bit of the financing details come in. But at the end of the day, this is really just designed to show you exactly what this looks like in practice. Uh, so, like I said, what I'm going to do is we're going to focus on these six things. Uh, so, really, at the end of the day, these the, these main points, the the modularity of this, the fact that we sync it with the estimates. Uh, multiple signing options, upselling at the end of it, fully functional offline, meaning you don't have to have connectivity. Uh, again, some of the uh, some of the e-sign platforms, you have to have connectivity in order to even build the template. Um, and then at the end of the day, the other thing is it's really tough to customize. So Leap, on the other hand, totally open. We've seen some customers do some pretty amazing things. Uh, we're happy to show you some of this stuff offline, but it is unbelievably cool what some of our customers have done in here. So we're going to focus on what information is important to capture. Again, the purpose of this is best practices. We're going to show you what best looks like. So without further ado, I'm just going to dive in real fast. And uh, give me a little plus one if you guys can see my screen. Anyone? I can see it on my end, James. Awesome, Steve. That's a plus one with a verbal. Love it. Right. So. With that said, what you guys are looking at right now, this is Leap. So I'm actually on my iPad displaying my screen to all of you guys. So what I've done is I've got a couple different things. At the top, I've got my customer. So what Leap has the ability to do is plug directly into your CRM. So in this case, I've plugged into my CRM and I've pulled in Mr. Johnson's information. So all of these details, his name, address, phone, pre-populate into every other form that's ever used throughout this, whether it's a credit application, whether it's my contract, or even a proposal. All of his information is pre-populated elsewhere. I never have to enter that in once. Two, I've gone and I've built two different things. So I've got my good, better, and my best directly coming from my estimate. So we're gonna go with the mid-grade shingle. And then from there, I've built out a couple windows here that I've got, again, my good, my better, and my best. If I look at what I built, again, I've just got two double hungs in the living room, two double hungs in the dining room, and in this, we're both gonna use the 2000 series. Done, game on. 
So at this point, I've got my conversation. Like Steve was saying, I'm sat down at the, co at, at the kitchen table with that customer. They gave me the go ahead. Let's build this thing out. What I can do is Leap does things very differently. We've actually got patents on this. So when anyone asks, are you the only one that does that? Uh, yeah, well, hopefully, unless that person wants to get sued. So um, with that said, what I do as a sales rep is you'll note that there's a one, a two, a three, and a four. What I'm doing here is I'm taking very specific pieces of my contract and I'm splitting it out based on what I need to do for the time being. So in this case, I'm selling them a roof, I'm selling them some windows, I need to make sure I put in some sort of details for cash and financing, and at the end of the day, I also have to have my terms and conditions, my notice of cancellation, I can even slap some lead safe forms in there as well. What I've done is I've basically broken out every single one of the forms that one of my salespeople would use in a very modular format. That way, every contract that gets to that customer is totally customized. I've also gone in here and I used an EOV report to build my roof. Boom, I want that in the contract as well. I paid for that. It's got a lot of pictures of their house. Might as well use it. So what I do once I've selected all the different pieces of my contract is I go in and I hit next. At this point, I'm not in my contract yet, but what I need to do is I need to start building out all the super important details that make up this transaction. So I can go in and I'll just show you some of the features of this. I can say, what are we tearing off? All right, well, we're tearing off some asphalt shingles. If I decide, okay, cool, my person's gonna go with some duration shingles, you'll note this section disappeared. It's also in red. So if I'm a lazy rep and I try and hit next, it's gonna go, nope, fill it out. So if you guys have ever run into that issue of, hey, my sales reps are constantly making mistakes or missing sections on a contract, cool, lock it down. Don't let them make the mistake. The neat thing too is when I select this, it's also only gonna populate whatever color schemes are available for that shingle type. If I change that, it changes. So again, it's also impossible to make contract, or excuse me, mistakes at the contract level selling something that does not exist. As I go down, I just need to make sure I fill in any other information. But the cool thing that you're going to note is that all of this pulled over directly from my estimate. So whatever I quoted them on in my estimate, boom, it automatically populates directly into your contract. So as a rep trying to maintain my momentum at the kitchen table, I don't have to do anything. It's already done. The other thing it's done, because I use that Eagle View report, it's pulled in all the photos. If I need to go around the house and take some other photos, it's also super easy for me to just hit my little camera button and say, cool, let's take some pictures. Done. So I can add those. I can add notes or details. Like we mentioned before, one of the things that's super important, and we'll actually get into this a little bit more detail after this section of the demo, um, Steve's gonna elaborate a little bit further on what the impact of these contracts are downstream. So if you think about it, production and install, they're likely gonna to touch this. So how can you build a contract that makes it that much easier for your install teams and production teams to get this job installed and done? I also have the ability to go back and create a little roof sketch. So I can say, hey, here's your house. Let's build where we need to put the downspouts. Again, I'm not an artist. I'm gonna put the downspouts right here, 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 here. Oh, and by the way, this is their garage here, done. So it's easy for me to add that. Now this is part of my contract. As I go through, note that there's these other tabs down here at the bottom I need to fill out. So my windows, when I went through my estimate, I realized there's 15 windows in the home, but I'm only selling them four of those. So from a marketing perspective, these data points here, great. I know there's a ability to upsell this person down the line. I can also say, well, let me make my install teams that lives that much easier, take some photos of those, attach them directly to this. You'll note here when I pull this up, I've also said a little bit of a note on this window specifically, you know, watch out the frame is damaged. Oh, and by the way, don't damage the roses when you install it, otherwise the lady's gonna be pissed. So moving along, I go into my payment details. 
we can talk about a lot of other cool things. So in Leap, you can also add these really neat dynamic fields. So if we're using an HOA, okay, cool. Toggle it on. If you're not, toggle it off. You can edit what you're going to sell this job for, how much they're going to put down in cash, what the deposit today is. Does the math for you. Again, we all know some of your sales reps, if you have to ask yourself, are they mathematicians? We already know the answer. The answer is no. So let them do the thing they're good at, which is selling. Don't rely on them to do all the other pieces like calculations. Errors in this field here can mean the difference between canceling a job and winning a job. So we also went through our secure payment capture. It's really easy for me to capture that payment if I use that feature within Leap so that when I get it, my card number's encrypted. So let's say worst case scenario, I leave this open and on the dash of my car and someone's staring at the screen. Great. They can't do anything with this because it's literally just the last four. Um, but on the back end, you guys are level one PCI compliant. Game on, everything's good to go. It's also pulled in the financing option that I chose because they're going to be financing the balance of that, you know, $32,000, which in this case is 30 k It'll give me a snippet. Everything that you guys see in this contract so far that we've built is custom. So if there's more data that you guys want to capture or if there's stuff you want to make mandatory, you can do literally anything your little heart desires. So at this point, I've built everything that I needed. So when I hit next, pretty cool stuff's going to happen. This is where the magic occurs. So we've created a way for you to stitch all this data together in a template that you can easily create using drag and drop features. I will tell you again, I am not the most amazing person when it comes to building this stuff on the back end, but I had one of our customer success reps teach me how to build a contract. I was able to build a full contract in about 10 minutes. So again, it's not the prettiest thing in the world like some of our customers, but you can build these amazing templates in a really short amount of time. So with that said, you can have your logos, any of your contractor licenses, you can have your watermark on the back. It's then stitched all the things that I just put together in a really beautiful format. And at this point, it's really easy for me to flip through this like an ebook with my customer and say, great, let's review all the different pieces. Here's your Eagle View report. You know, and as we go through, I can even get myself to a place where I go, all right, um, again, flipping through this. Again, up here, you can see that this is a 27 page. Um, this is a 27 page. Uh, oh, great. Um, yeah, lovely, right? Um, but again, you can see here. Anyway, we can go back through, and there's a lot of other things. I'm just going to add one solar attic fan, and I'll get to this very quickly so you guys can see it. Um, but the beauty of this at the end of the day is when I add these and I go back through, I can simply finish that. I'm going to add my little roof sketch very quickly. There's a house. Yay. Done. Next. Back here, what I can do is I've got three options up at the top. I can review this, I can print this, and I can sign this. So the review feature, Steve, why don't you talk to us a little bit about what you use the review feature for and why you built that into this? Yeah, so when we started rolling Leap out um, at the company that, you know, when I initially worked there, and this was a really in its infancy, we had um, kind of like mainly with new reps or like a really big deal that was being sold, like a fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 deal that was being sold. Uh, we wanted a second set of eyes on the contract. So let's just imagine a sales rep comes out of training. He goes out and his first lead, he sells it. It's a $15,000 roof job. Well, you might want to make sure that your, your manager or somebody else reviews that document before it's presented to the homeowner just to eliminate any possibility of errors or omissions that Leap wasn't able to catch at that time. So we would hit the review button, send it off to the, uh, say our sales manager. Our sales manager would get it on his phone or his, his, uh, his, in his inbox. They would review it, send them a quick text. Hey, everything looks good. We also use this as kind of like a order confirmation. Um, so like we, our customers, uh, we would say, okay, we're going to go ahead and put this order through. I want to send this off to my manager. He's going to confirm it. Like if there's any discounts or anything that needed to be approved and I could send that off to my homeowner, he, uh, my homeowner, my sales manager, and he would review it. 
give me the thumbs up and then you know everything was was good so it's mainly just to so you can put a second set of eyes on this contract before you actually present it to the customer awesome so with that 11th hour it's really just used as an oversight tool just to make sure that you mitigate yep. all errors make sure that everything's clear and clean and then at that point give them the go ahead and they can sign the deal right awesome so that's the review feature you guys for print Let's be honest. And I actually had a conversation with one of our customers yesterday. They're like, look, we sell to a lot of 55 plus. And one of the things that they love is paper. They don't like signing iPads or something like that. That's fine. The good thing is that's not all of your customers. That's just some of them. So you have the ability to also connect to a printer if you need to. You can print this thing out. They can sign it. It just depends. Everyone is different. We have another company that does you know, literally, they sell like walk-in tubs and stuff like that for seniors. And they're like, they love it. I can zoom in. <laughs> so again, it really just depends on your clientele and what you feel is right for your processes. The good thing is Leap can do it all. More importantly, we're going to dive in. And this is a point at which you can just sign this deal right here and there. So you're going to notice two things. One is the signature field right here. The other one is the DocuSign integration over here. So want to be very clear and concise because I guarantee this question will come up. Is this signature DocuSign? And the answer is no. This signature is Leap. So the beauty of this, the way Steve built it, is again designed to capitalize on that momentum. So if I know that Jerry Johnson is the homeowner and this is what they were agreeing to, get Jerry to sign this thing out. Boom. Done. If I continue through this, I can just add all the signatures that I need. If you do run into that instance, like we were talking about earlier when we looked at those e-sign platforms, there are 100% going to be those circumstances where you need to send this off because it might be a one-legger where the husband or wife isn't home, you're only talking to half of the decision maker, and legally you have to get that other person to sign at another point in time. Great. We've actually thought ahead and said, that's a fantastic feature to have incorporated. So we've integrated with DocuSign so that all I have to do is click that DocuSign feature. It'll create this custom contract that we just developed. It'll convert that into a DocuSign format. Jerry Johnson's email from my CRM is already there and ready to go. So all I have to do on this side is hit done. Boom. It's going to blast Jerry an email. And at that point, they can go in and DocuSign this wherever or whenever they, whenever they get to it or whenever that other person's home. So this is another feature that we built in knowing that it has to be the full, the full, um, excuse me, full functionality and all of the different permutations. Otherwise, it's a waste of time. So, James, also on that, I just wanted to point out that if you had, like, so sometimes there's going to be a husband and a wife, there's going to be two sets of signatures that you're going to need. And what's really nice about this is, like, if you're running a one legged like, lead, and let's say that the, the husband's at work or the wife's at work, and you only have one of them there, and they say, okay, let's do it, but you need the other signature, you could sign one of them and then docu-sign the other. Or you could put the husband's email in one of the signature capture field and then put the wife's email in a separate email capture field. And then the sales rep signs on the iPad where he needs to sign. And then Leap will mash all that together and put the, the live signature on from where the sales rep signed directly onto the document, then send the DocuSign first to the husband, you know, and then he will sign it with his email. As soon as the husband's done signing it, it will then trigger an email to the wife. The wife will sign it with hers. And as soon as she's done signing it, it will trigger an, either an email back to the home office if that's where you want it to go, or you can have it directly upload into the CRM. So you can literally have your rep sign a deal on say a Friday and you come in Monday morning and the customer done docu signed it over the weekend and it's already in your crm or it's already in your inbox and you can go ahead and kick off that production process awesome so again you guys one of the things that we wanted to do is think of all the possible permutations that you're going to run into and make it that much easier and convenient for the customers so like steve was saying you can have one sign stitch it together with the docu sign feature have the other one sign push it all back to your crm BCC whoever you want in your home office and give an email confirmation directly to the homeowner. So lots of really cool stuff that we can do. In this case, we're just going to rip through and sign for Jerry and sign for myself as well. If I'm lazy, again, one of the things that you're going to run into is a rep trying to say, okay, well, I got everything done. Let me hit send. Oops. By the way, 
if I don't get my initial points, this is not a legally binding contract. So if I use two fingers to tap, it's gonna pull up all the initial points and it's impossible for me to miss anything. So boom, I get through everything that I need to do. Notice when I double tap, it's not doing anything different. So at this point, it's now switched from sign to send. I've got all my different signature points and initials done. So all I have to do is hit send. One of the points that I brought up there in that, in that contract section in Leap was that you also have the ability to upsell. So again, one of the things that's really tough is that when you're using a paper contract or when you're using an e-sign contract or even a PDF, it's really tough for that homeowner to maintain a copy of, of their contract side by side with the materials that they just purchased. So what Steve also did is when he created this, he said, we've got to make a way that these people can keep everything all together. Because from an, you know, using e-signs, one of the benefits is it's in your email. I don't know about you guys, I never delete my emails because I can just go back and search things. So I've got emails going back to like the early 2000s. So when you look at this, it's super easy for you to include some of those brochures as downloadable PDFs. So I can say, great, we sold you a roof and in that roof there were some gutters. You got, the, you, you know, you, let, me, let me give you a link to our website. Let me give you the uh, shingles that you purchased. Oh, and by the way, down the road, I think you also might like a new sliding door and the siding on your house looks a little shoddy. I think you should look into upgrading that as well. So I can start planting the seed for future acquisitions with this specific person just by dropping in some cool, uh, some cool brochures. When I hit send, there's Jerry's email coming directly from my CRM so I don't have to re-enter anything. I hit send, boom. What just happened, and again, that's a, you know, a, a dummy email, but what's happened right now is a couple different things. Number one, Jerry just got an email confirmation. Hey, thank you so much. Welcome to the Leap family. Thank you for buying a roof and four windows. We're so excited to have you. Here's the next steps that you can expect. Someone's gonna call from our production team. We're gonna come and make sure that everything is measured to the T. And at that point, we're gonna schedule your installation and order the materials. Two, it's uploaded a copy of that contract back to the CRM. So not only are we talking about maintaining best practices by what we're capturing, we're also using this as an ability to, to maintain organization. So we've uploaded a copy of that directly to the CRM. And then three, we've BCC'd our home office for whoever needs to get a copy of this. I'm sure every one of you on this call is a business owner. Guess what? That's the best email you're gonna get all day. Hey, so-and-so just sold this deal. It was, a, you know, in this case, this was a $32,000 job. Game on, love it. So. With that said, if you have any questions on this stuff, definitely drop it in that question section. Um, I'm gonna go back, one other thing I wanna discuss in here too, which is a little bit more around best practices, is I wanna talk to you about why you should also consider keeping your contracts modular. There's a lot of different scenarios that you're gonna run into beyond just selling a deal. Some of those might be, hey, there's a change order that needs to happen on site, or you know, one of your foremans goes to the job or your install manager and they, that, that homeowner comes up to them and says, you know what, they quoted me on that window. I wasn't gonna do it, but it just looks dumb now without it. You know, it's been eating me. Can I just add that? The neat thing that you can do with Leap is if you keep those things separate, you can have an, uh, a template in here for change orders. You can have a template in here for your certificate of completion. You can have your certificate of whatever you want or a template for literally anything that you do embedded in here. So even if I don't even sell anything to this person and I just want to say bring something up like a notice of cancellation because I forgot to have them fill it out, I can pull that up, have them sign this thing on the spot. It doesn't even need to be correlated to my estimate or anything like that. So again, one of the bonuses to keeping these things modular is it allows you to split out the different fundamental pieces of your contracts and use them throughout the process or throughout the funnel in your business. It doesn't have to be just sales. It can be your call center. It can be your, you know, your, your install teams. It can be your customer surveys or satisfaction surveys at the end of it. All of that stuff can be embedded directly into this. 
So again, feel free to drop the questions in there if there's anything that we need to cover. Um, what I am going to do is I am going to jump back into the presentation because we're going to keep things going. All right. So moving along. Um, what I want to do too is I want to pass this around. It's nice to understand exactly why we do all these things, but I want you guys to get a better understanding of where we came from. You know, a lot of people say, oh, it's great. You know, you created this thing. That's nice. Did you just do a bunch of surveys with customers to understand their needs? No, we didn't have to. We had Steve. So I'm going to shut up real quick. And like I said, Steve is a rock star. Like he's, he's someone that's so unique. I've been around the, the, the tech space for a very long time. He, he, he's a bit of a unicorn. I don't know that he actually wants me to call him that, but he really is. It's he founded Leap in 2016. He was a number one sales rep for seven years, sold exterior remodeling. Um, you know, and the shop that he sold this in was pretty competitive. You know, you're talking around 40 outside sales rep at any given time. So super competitive. And he was running deals all over the country. So um, Steve, I'm going to shut up. I'm going to pass this over to you. Give us a little bit of an understanding of where you came from and how Leap was created. Right. So uh, I started in sales when I was 16 years old. And um, actually, one of the best sales training I've ever had was when I worked at Best Buy. And um, my best friend actually started a home improvement company uh, selling decks. And he asked me to come work for him. And in the state of Maryland, which is where we're located, you have to have a license to go out and give these estimates. So I went to take the test, passed the license and failed it. And I said, well, I'm just going to try working for a different company doing something similar and, um, you know, learn the ropes and then I'll go pass my test, get my license and go work for my buddy. And that's when I started working at a company out of Baltimore. It's called New Look Home Design. And I worked there. Um, as soon as I started there, they, um, Basically, you know, I was like, hey, you can make a lot of money. And I was like, okay, great. That sounds awesome. And I, right out of the gate, I was just very successful, a very su successful sales rep. And um, I remember it was actually life changing, like when I started working there, because the amount of money you can make in home improvement sales is is a lot. And uh, it was all paper if processes. If you're good. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> right. So there's a lot, there was a lot of manual processes, right? So on top of being a salesman, I'm also a techie. I love technology. So the company, they trained me with their carbon copy contracts and their paper price books. And I'm like, hey, just follow this process and you can sell and it, and it work. And it did. And it worked. But I'm a lazy sales rep, like a lot of sales reps, they're lazy. And I'm like, well, a lot of this stuff that we're doing day to day is very repetitive. So I'm going to you know, use technology, use my techie side of me to make this make my life easier. So I done what a lot of you know, home improvement contractors do. I built a spreadsheet and I would take a laptop in a, in a house every single lead and I would use this spreadsheet day in and day out um, for probably about a year and a half and um, calculate my price and I would spit out my finance options. It would do everything except write a contract. And then I wanted to put my spreadsheet on an iPad, that's when the iPad came out, me being the techie that I am, decided to buy an iPad and found that the only thing I could really do on it that was productive uh, was kill time playing Angry Birds. So I wanted I wanted an excuse of why I just bought this thousand dollar device. I wanted to use it in the home, but Microsoft Office didn't exist on the iPad. So I decided to um, you know rebuild the thing in an application. So actually I knew nothing about computer programming back then. I just knew how, I knew enough to program an Excel spreadsheet and I just um, was like, okay, how can I make apps? How can I make apps for this iPad? And I just, um, you know, set out to do it. No intentions of selling it. Just, hey, I just want to replace the functionality, use my iPad. And what happened, like, and I think it's a good story. At the time, I really, like, didn't know that this was going to become what it became. And I was just out there running leads day in and day out. I was making the mistakes. And I was using a little notepad on my iPhone uh, to keep track of all the different things. Like I'll go out there and I was like, hey man, I lost this deal because I ran out of time because I couldn't figure out the difference in price between with the sunroom and without the sunroom. And, you know, if they included the garage and didn't include the garage and, you know, all the, in, the day in and day out or, hey, I lost the commission because I forgot the two windows in the garage. You know, I forgot to ask the customer that. And if I only have my app remind me about the two windows in the garage every single time, that it never happened again. And just real world scenarios of things that, hey, I need to technology to make my life easier. I wanted to be able to go into the customer's house, worry about selling the deal, you know, building that rapport, overcoming the objections, 
and you know just closing the sale. I didn't want to have to worry about all the paperwork and nonsense that went along with it, updating your lead results, sending stuff back into the home office, emailing this person and that person. And then even after you sold it, I get the phone call from production because they're like, hey, you forgot to put this thing on your contract and you have to drive all the way back out to the customer's house. So you know, and that was it. It was over the course of years of doing this and then other sales reps doing this, you know, while they were using the application and like, hey, can you make it do this? Can you make it do that? And, you know, so the, the application was built kind of from the inside out is what we always call it, as opposed from the outside in. Like there's a lot of estimator tools out there that are built by like manufacturers or CRMs and they're not, you know, built by the person sitting at the kitchen table to know what the real world scenarios are. They're built from somebody who, you know, manufactures the window, which is different data that you use that when you're selling the window or, or, or widget, whatever widget that you're selling. So, you know, it was built by an actual company that does what, what people do. And it wasn't until uh, sales reps, like after things have kind of been established, it was um, over the uh, six or seven states in the mid-Atlantic area, like Maryland, Virginia, uh, Pennsylvania, DC is where, you know, the area that New Look covered and reps would, would work for them. I mean, there was a sales team of 40 plus sales reps, depending on the season. And they would go work for other, other organizations in the area. And it wasn't, um, you know, until I started getting requests from other companies around the area to use my software where a rep went and worked for them. And then they would go there and say, hey, you guys need to be using this software. At the time, we really didn't even have a name. We called it Estimate. And they're like, hey, you need to be using this software because the way you guys are doing it is just all backwards. And um, the first couple I turned down, I was like, no, it's not really a thing. You know, I'm doing my in-home sales thing. This app is pretty much done. I'll tweak it here and there. And um, after about the fifth or sixth company that contacted me, um, said, hey, we'd really like to use your software and maybe an offer to basically quit sales and go out and do it. And I was like, all right, I'm going to give it a shot. And it was actually overwhelming at first. But um, here we are, we're two and a half years in, we have close to a 1000 companies that are using this, um, you know, 1000s of sales reps using it. And you know, you can go in and see all the different estimates. And one of the best compliments that I've ever gotten with this application was a guy told me that Leap was able to give him his weekends back. Because you know, all the day in and day out stuff that goes along with creating the folders and, you know, emailing out, hey, you forgot to turn in your contract or just double checking carbon copies because sales reps, you know, you can't read their handwriting or their fields missing, like all of that stuff Leap can eliminate. And the guy says, you know, by introducing this into my software, my weekends are now freed up because that's what I used to do to basically double check all the data entry and build all that stuff out and put out all the fires that come along with doing an analog sales process. And That's then, awesome, Steve. Yeah. That's awesome. So let's talk a little bit more about that. So again, we, we, we talked a little bit about where Leap came from, but let, let's focus a little bit on the contracts and the methodology. So help us understand, why did you go back in and start creating some of the modular formats for this? Aside from just obviously the need to be flexible and looking professional, blah, blah, blah. Um, what really drove you to do this? What was the interaction that you had that, 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 uh, that allowed you to think of this? Yep. So initially when you know, Leap was, was being built, um, it was to replace the functionality of the spreadsheet, which did not have the capability to do contracts at that time. So once we had the estimator, we had financing in it, and we had uh, presentation materials all inside of the application, we really didn't have a solution for contracts. So I started looking at how you know people are doing digital contracts, and that's what you were already showing on those slides with editable PDFs, and you can do like the e-sign type of functionality, and that's pretty much the route that I started with when with building it. It was a, basically we'd started with a PDF that was already laid out with all the fields on it. And then the software would basically fill it out for me, you know, basically an editable PDF. Uh, the downside to that though, is the company, I, I remember they, I was like, hey, we need to add one more line item. We need to ask a yes or no question on our contract is if something is included or not. I forget what it was. And basically just, we had to start from scratch on, on that a, a brand new PDF template because it just completely changed the layout. And now all of my my little fields, um, little merge fields on it didn't work. So when uh, I was doing in-home sales, I um, 
would sell a lot of exterior remodeling, specifically roofing. And if I would go in the communities that had homeowners associations, I would sell, uh, the, I would pitch my products based on what I knew that that homeowners association was going to allow. So for an example, if I was selling a roof and I seen that all of the roofs in the community was the middle of the road shingle that I sold, well, I would only pitch the middle of the road shingle because I knew that's the only thing that could get approved. But then on my contract, because whether I was using the digital version or the carbon copy version, they were kind of a one size fits all where they had some fields on it that you marked no, not included, scratch it out, whatever. Um, and when I would sell my middle of the road shingles, sometimes there were things that were not included in my middle of the road product. And I had to mark that on the contract. So when I would go over it with the homeowner, I had to explain away things that were just irrelevant to their project to begin with. And I always compare this to going to like a car dealership. And if you sit down with the salesman and you're filling out all your paperwork, your car salesman is not going through and saying, you're not getting the upgraded wheels, you're not getting the roof rack, you're not getting the tow package and blah, 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 blah. He only is going to show you the stuff that you are getting. If you look at the sticker on the window on the car, it's all the things that are included, not the things that are not included. So I kind of had an epiphany and I'm like, I need a way that the user, the sales rep is presented with every possible option. That's why we do it on the one size fits all contracts. Our sales rep doesn't forget anything, but I need the actual document to be dynamic and I need it to change based on the inputs of the, the sales rep. And that's really where this where this whole entire contract engine came about. So there's actually two views with filling out a contract where if you're using like those e-sign contracts or you're using the editable PDFs, you're viewing the same document, your sales rep's editing the same document that you present to the homeowner. But in Leap, you actually present your sales rep with a list of fields that they fill out and then a document is generated based off of those fields and only those fields that you customize. Then as far as being modular, you make it like that so that you're products are separated onto different pages. So although it's all one PDF document, you make sure that you know pages one and two are, are, are always roofing and then pages two and three are windows. And you know the fourth page is the payment terms. And by doing this, you can uh, print them out or email them out, however you, you guys do it to your production team or your installers so that they have only the information that they, that they need to get the job installed. You can like remove awesome. a bunch of the customers, the sensitive information, their billing information, their, their credit terms, et cetera. You can remove all those off of their pages when you send them out. Oh, that's awesome. Cool, cool, cool. The other thing I want to note to you guys is uh, in, the, in the questions field, um, how many of you guys sell across state lines? You know, how many of you guys sell if, you know, we're, we're kind of in that like uh, D.C., Virginia, Maryland corridor where within about <laughs> literally about 10 minutes, you can be in two states and a district. How many of you guys on this call today Sell across state lines. I'll give it about two seconds. Come on. One of the things that you can do that's actually really cool uh, is in this app, like we mentioned, and I'm going to go back and show you this really fast on the uh, on the Zoom window. In here, one of the things that I can do is that you'll note at the beginning of this, I know that Mr. Johnson's house is in, I believe that's Iowa. I believe it's Iowa. Yeah. Anyway, um, this person's house is in Iowa. So if if you have all this stuff being passed over from your CRM, and this is a set state field, what it can do is when I'm in my contracts, if you sell across state lines and you have different notice of cancellations or or that right to cancel period or different terms and conditions based on the state, you don't have to have them in one in one document that addresses both. You can keep them individual and the app itself can recognize what state they're in and pre-populate the correct forms. That way, again, you take out the guessing game knowing that every single one of your reps is going to be selling with the right document every single time. So it's just a cool little thing that was built in as a safeguard knowing that uh, certain companies are going to be selling across state lines and in different, in, 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 in different districts. So. Um, moving back to the PowerPoint, um, one of the things that we also want to start talking about, Steve, is just how did this, we, we, we talked a little bit about your impact or the, the ability to, uh, you know, uh, I guess, empower you to sell more, um, focusing on that capitalization of the momentum. But the other thing that I also want to ask you, especially when it comes to that control element, how important was control for you when selling? 
Right. I mean, it's very important. So in, in you know, all the sales training that I've ever been through, if you read any books or you watch any videos, you know, it talks about how, you know, controlling the sales process and the flow of it and the momentum. Uh, so we, when you're doing in-home sales, I, I, I remember it's, it's still one of the only industries that's left um, where you use carbon copy contracts. And it's just something about pulling out paper and the customer signing it you know, where it's like, oh man, this is serious. And when the, the projects that I was selling, exterior remodeling, and pretty much any home improvement project, it's usually like a once or twice in a lifetime purchase that the homeowner will make. So it's already a foreign process that the customer's not used to doing. And, you know, we're, we're taught all of our lives to if you don't trust something or don't know, whatever, just say no, right? You hear that all the time. So, you know, that's why there's a lot, like you, you pitch a bunch of leads, you sell less than you pitch. So, when I would, uh, I wanted to keep the, the sales process as comfortable as possible, including filling out the contract. So when I would get to the contract, when I was using these carbon copies, I would pull these things out. And then the customers, you know, there was just like a, a tense kind of thing where I'm sliding that thing over to them. And I'm like, okay, sign here, here, and here. And it was just something about that. Uh, you know, a, a more familiar process to homeowners, especially these days, is digital signatures. It's just something about being digital that isn't as intimidating as being on paper. Uh, and I always compare this. I mean, every single day, I just went to, you know, get a coffee this morning and you, you're paying, you're signing. As a matter of fact, the coffee, you don't even sign anymore. So, you know, some of these things, you're not even signing the digital capture pad, but you go, let's go say you go to the grocery store, you're signing the signature capture pad with the little pen and you really don't second guess the price. You put the thing up there, you know, the computer added it up correctly and they hit the total button. You see it, you swipe your card and you keep going. And, you know, by the time you get to the car, you probably forgot how much we've been spent on that grocery bill. So it's just something about being digital that allowed me as a sales rep to present this to the homeowner. And although, yes, it is a contract, the homeowner just feels much more comfortable. I just slide my iPad over and it pops up instantly. So I don't have to say, give me a second or wait a minute while I fill it out. I'm like, okay, here's everything that we just discussed because it was all auto-populated based off of what we had discussed. Um, you know, here's your disclosures. Here's your totals that we have already discussed as well. That's all auto-populated from the uh, iPad, you know, which is all auto-populated, depending on how deep you wanted to go with a demo, we can show you how it's, even your measurements can be auto-populated. And, um, you know, and then the customer would just sign it with their finger and then it shows up in their inbox and there's really never paper that I have to slide over to them and sign it. So it definitely helped me control the momentum. It was a lot faster, a lot smoother transaction. It was much more professional. Uh, the customer was definitely much more receptive or accepting of that, you um, contract and you know it was just a smoother process all around that's awesome and the other thing i was going to note to you guys is when you're using leads um steve brought up a good uh, a good point with familiarity and comfort with technology throughout this entire process again the the duration of that interaction with the homeowner uh, obviously that can be decreased and there's there's operationally more time to run more opportunities or more appointments um, the other thing to note with that, though, is the reason it's able to be decreased is simply because this customer from beginning to end has been interacting with the device. They've been interacting with the technology. So by the time you do get to that contract phase, same thing as buying the latte or going to the grocery store or, you know, I bought a sandwich today and same thing, flip the little square thing around. I signed the iPad, he flipped it back around on his side. So we're so familiar with this stuff day in and day out that once you have that person interacting with the device, once you have them educated throughout the entire sales process, it's really comfortable for that person to pull their finger and or pull their finger out and just sign the thing. So again, it's 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 part of part of our day to day process, and it just speaks to that you know first slide that we showed you guys. It's the majority the majority of the people that you're going to be interacting with over the next 10 years are going to be progressively younger. So they are going to be those folks that literally have their face in a phone, even on a date. So again, it's, it's that crowd that we need to start capitalizing and speaking to. It's becoming that much more of a norm in society. Um, so one of the other things that we didn't speak about yet, and it's going to be the last point that we discussed prior to going into the Q and a, you guys is, we want to talk a little bit about the impact that this has on the rest of the business. So again, it's not just, you know, it's not just the sales teams that this impacts. We, we've, you know, dropped a bunch of different names of different departments, some being production, some being install, et cetera. Steve, talk to us a little bit about how this impacted the other parts of the business and how you at New Look learned what they needed and then catered leaps specifically to it. 
Right. So once we started to roll this out through across the sales team, obviously uh, production was definitely impacted by this, right? Because they went from carbon copy contracts that have 40 to 50 um, different types of handwriting that they had to interpret to a much clean digital contract that they got instantly before the sales rep even left the customer's house. So, um, you know, there was actually um, uh, tasks that people are assigned for creating folders. When I worked at that company and they, before the leap, before any of this all started, they actually had color coded folders. So it was actually a very organized analog process. And depending on which product was sold or being installed, yeah, the color folders, I remember windows, I think was blue, roofing was red, you know, the, I think siding was yellow. And, you know, that way just at a glance, you could see what the project was without actually opening the folder. And then they had little st color coded stickers on it that as it went through the, the process, of, you know, remeasure and ordered and, you know, scheduled for install, et cetera, the little stickers will go on the folder. So again, at a glance, you can see where that folder was, um, you know, in the process. So we, uh, you know, those that once, once Leap was rolled out, that all was, was eliminated. Like those tasks, like nobody had to do those anymore. So those people were, uh, were either repositioned in different parts, just laid off in general because they didn't, they didn't need to do that anymore. So definitely save that part of it. Um, you know, and then it, it's, uh, they can read the contracts. There's a lot less errors. So as far as like time, uh, I, I remember it used to be, I think you had 48 hours to turn your contract in from the time you sold it and weekends didn't count. So if you sold a deal on a Friday, you could have 48 hours, not counting weekends. So you don't turn anything into say uh, Monday or Tuesday. And that's like nothing happened for those three or four days with that customer. So they just signed a really big deal and zero people had contacted them for four days, uh, you know, and then the folder would have to be created. And, you know, that would take a day or by the end of that day or whatever. And so sometimes they're not getting in contact for almost a week from the time that they signed the contract to the time that they're actually contacted just to schedule a remeasure. And then they have to schedule a time for the remeasure guy to go back out there and get a materials list together. So it went from that to, hey, the sales rep signs a deal in the home and uh, right then from the kitchen table, I mean, of course, as long as they had an internet connection, it would just go into the CRM instantly. So the company, uh, New Look, they use the CRM market chart and it would just go in there and literally the production people just have to hit refresh on their browser and the contract, the lead results, the notes, the pictures, everything was just already in that customer file. They could go ahead and, you know, deal could be sold in the morning. They could reach out to the customer after lunchtime to schedule a remeasure and the remeasure guy could be out there that evening to, to go ahead and do it. So, I mean, it was literally that fast. You went from one week, uh, you know, to hours. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really cool stuff, you guys. And, and one of the things that you can see is there's a couple of testimonials on our website. Um, one of them, I believe it was from Jonathan Belden, was saying uh, Leap has turbocharged his, his business. I, you know, I don't want to misquote him, but again, you can see it on our website. It, it, it's allowed him to get deals through the funnel that much faster. The faster he can get them installed and fully charged out, the more he can... Uh, um, the more he can allocate his crews to do other jobs. So again, there's a lot of really cool benefits that come from this. Um, these are just a couple of them. We'd love to take you guys through a deeper dive on this. The last thing we'll part with again is Steve, talk with us just about really, really quickly in a couple, couple seconds or less on each is let, let's, let's talk a little bit about the three things that we should be looking at, especially if you guys are in a position to consider this. For those of you who are already lead customers, We'd love to dive into this a little bit deeper, understanding that you know some of the first iterations of this was taking your existing contracts and then putting them into Leap. There's a lot of other things that you can do to level up and go to that 2.0, 3.0. So feel free to reach out directly to your CRC or your, your customer support individual, or uh, <coughs> excuse me, just go to our website and chat in. Hey, saw your webinar, would love to dive a little bit deeper on my contracts. Drop that in the chat, we'd love to help you go to that next level. So Steve, help us finish off on these last three and then we'll address some of the Q&A that we had. Yep, so um, this is good, like when people say, hey, you know, how do I know if Leap's right for me or if I should, pun intended, take the leap? And couple, these are the three questions I'll kind of, you know, tell you to ask yourself is how much of your current sales process is digital? I can almost guarantee you have a website, you have a, a digital uh, way to capture leads. You're probably using some sort of calendar 
to, to manage your appointments, you know, a CRM preferably. Um, you know, you might even be using some type of carbon or digital contract like a PDF or an e-sign version. Um, so how much of your current sales process is digital? And then look at that compared to what your other processes are, right? How much uh, like emails and stuff are you sending? Most companies, the, from the time the lead sets to the time that that contract is turned in is very analog and that sales rep in the house face to face with your customers are not utilizing technology to their benefit. Um, and then the other question it asks is who would benefit if you were to take that process digital, who would benefit from it? So it's not just going to be obviously the sales rep, right? It's not just going to be the sales rep, but your production team, your office manager, your call center, your, you know, your husband, your wife, you know, it, it everybody in your organization will probably be affected by you going digital and how much of a benefit is that going to give you? And then the other one is, is it worth it to go digital? So, you know, th there are people out there where like if our software was a dollar, they would say that that was too expensive, right? So there's that, we get that objection, just like everybody probably gets that objection with whatever widget you're selling. And my, my answer to that is Leap is one of those things that we you, everything we talked about on this webinar and everything that we would demo you in, in a one-on-one -on -one demo, you are already doing. You are already calculating pricing. You are already um, you know, uh, carrying brochures and a briefcase in the house. You are already writing up contracts, no matter if you're doing it digital or you're doing it with an analog version. So you do not have a company unless you have a sales process. So if you don't make sales, you don't have a company. So when when you ask yourself is it worth it to go digital think about what it costs you to do nothing the cost of not doing business um, because it costs you money to do it with digital contracts or editable pdfs or docu signs it costs you money to assign your leads the way that you're assigning leads you know it costs you money to do double data entry and it costs you sales and, and dollars per ticket and you know to do it the way that you're doing it if you're not using this digital platform and i know this i've seen it firsthand both with the companies that i worked for and the hundreds of companies that have already adopted leap we get amazing testimonials i love hearing them because this is just something that was created that i created out of kind of necessity um, and as a hobby and here it is it's changing the way businesses are running both from mom and pop you know husband and wife ran uh, small organizations all the way up to hundreds of million dollar companies that cover 30 plus states and the, you know across the entire country are using this type of software and you know there is a cost to not using it so and i promise you the cost of not using it far outweighs the cost of using it so it not just in dollar and cents of course in dollar and cents but also in the professionalism of your company you know the repeat business you're going to get from your customers the uh, ability to train your sales reps the retention of your sales reps the recruit recruiting of sales reps growing and scaling your organization bottlenecks in your organization and I could go on and on and on about you know what leap is going to do but I would encourage everyone on here if you're not already a leap customer definitely uh, take some time and do a one-on-one -on -one demo and we can custom tailor um, the demo to best we can the way that you guys do business and show you all the best practices and how people are using this software yep exactly so we're going to jump into a little bit of Q&A, but like Steve said, uh, I know we've, we've gone a little bit long on this one. Uh, the thing I really want everybody to note is we are going to be reaching out. We would love to get you a one-on-one -on -one demo with all of this. Uh, it's something that we push everybody to do. Uh, if you are an existing customer and you want to dive a little bit deeper, cool. Let us walk you through it too. Feel free to send us uh, um, Either go to our website and chat in that you want to you want to go deeper, or feel free to go to uh, info at leaptodigital.com or send an email to that. Uh, we, like I said, we will be reaching out directly to you guys. You can always request a one on one on one demo proactively by going to leaptodigital.com, and at that point, requesting the free demo. We'll reach out to you within a matter of minutes or less, uh, and, and we'll, we'll get that scheduled out immediately. So let, let's talk a little bit about the Q&A. Um, so there's two questions that I've got so far in here. Feel free to, uh, to dive in. We're also going to be providing videos for this as well. Um, one of the questions that we had, can timelines be adjusted based on the product that I'm selling? So I'm going to jump back into Leap real fast. If anyone has to jump, feel free. But uh, we want to make sure that everybody gets an opportunity to get their questions answered. So if you want to stay a little longer, by all means, we'll take as much time as we need. So when you're in here, anytime you take one of these templates, so let's say I'm taking a roof template, for example, and I go to my next, all of these fields, as well as the additional details or the terms and conditions, 
can be customized. In this case, you can see that this is 215, 2017. Yeah. Um, this can be updated and this can be customized. I can go in here and I can edit this out and say, well, they're not actually going to be out of town during that time. You know, they're going to be out of town in 2019 because we're not Doc Brown and we don't have a DeLorean. So anyway, I can go back in here and then I can adjust any one of these details. The cool thing is you can set those automatic default values so that it pre-populates and your reps don't have to think about it. You can also go back in and make some of these things mandatory. So if you want them to set those fields and it is something that's become an issue and you've run into errors here and there, put a line in here that says dates available or put a line in that says ability to install or whatever it's going to be and you can custom input that amount. If they try and skip it, you can give them an error message that says, hey, lazy person, nice try. But yeah, you James, need to fill also, that out. you can make it like how you showed earlier in the webinar, how they, when you change the shingle, it changes the color options. Well, you can make it too, where when you select uh, whatever type of product that they're selling, so roofing has a one to two week out, Windows has a six week out, whatever it is, instead of having the colors change, you just have those time selections change. So they, so, you know, you could have the, the product auto populate, and then based on what the product is, you can either have a picker come up where the sales rep can select between a date range, or you could have it auto fill based on what product was selected in the estimate. Exactly. So hope that answers your question with that one. Again, we'll uh, we can give you way more details on that as well. Um, number two, the other question that I got was, um, how does the uh, how does a how does a rep input a credit card or ACH? So one of the features that Steve built out, uh, and this is this is obviously coming from a lot of, of issues with PCI compliance, et cetera. If you're not familiar with that, we just did a webinar on it. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and put a one dollar charge in here. So when you go in, you can select either one of these, and Leap is actually built out what we like to call secure payment capture. So whether you're doing credit card or whether you're doing ACH, all I have to do in these sections is I can either scan this card, you know, again, I can, I can use my camera, or I can go back in here and I can just type this stuff in. So I can say, hey, I'm James, and here's my credit card. Feel free to copy this, no one can buy anything with it. And at that point, here's my CVV and good old Northern Virginia, done. At that point, once you do this, it creates that token that's stored on that level one PCI compliance server. And then what it's doing on the front end is it's encrypting that card number so that you cannot see that on the application itself and you've maintained compliance. Does that answer your question? Cool. Yeah. All right. Answered, answers awesome. it for me. <laughs> nice. You're welcome, Steve. Thanks. Um, sweet. So if this, without, I mean, there, there's a couple other questions thrown in here. I want to be cognizant of time. So for anyone else, feel free, last call. Um, John, we got one here. Is the cu customer entering in the credit card number? You can absolutely flip the iPad around. Because again, this is on an iPad. You're going to be using it throughout the entire interaction. So you can absolutely flip that around and the customer can enter in that credit card. So whatever details you need as well, payment schedules, things like that. Hey, we charge 10% uh, once that cancellation period is expired. We charge uh, another 40% once materials have been ordered and 50% is due upon completion of the job. You can have all of those terms and conditions baked into these additional details in your cash and finance section as well. So that way when they go to sign it at the end of the day, have that auto populated. And here you would put a section that said, hey, this is a signature point. And at that, once I hit next, it'll take me in here. You'll see that signature and they can agree to those terms and conditions, et cetera. So once I'm done with that, you know, I can hold that down, hit sign, boom, 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 done. So John, I hope that one answers your question as well. So any last minute questions for you guys? Uh, I see one All here. Right. Are there other CRMs that this integrates with into besides MarketShirt? So yes. Yeah, there's um, 
five currently, which is uh, Proof of 360, Salesforce, Market Sharp, Lead Perfection, Job Nimbus. And we also have what's called webhooks, which is a way that you can basically integrate with anything. Uh, that would require some developers to do it. But if you had like a homegrown CRM, you can also use those webhooks. But if you use any of those five, Market Sharp, Salesforce, Lead Perfection, Proof of 360, Job Nimbus, we can integrate with those directly with very minimal setup. Yep, and the other thing I'll say to you guys too is we do run into some companies who don't use CRMs. That's fine. When we went back, again, I'm still in the application itself here. So if I go back, what you're looking at here, if I clear this, this is nothing other than an iCalendar. So if you guys are dispositioning or assigning out any one of your uh, appointments to your reps via a shared calendar, you can do that in the exact same way. So if you're not using a CRM to manage your leads because you just haven't you, you haven't bought that layer of technology yet, that's fine. You can 100% use Leap. It's a hell of a lot easier to build out Leap than it is to build out a CRM. Yeah, so, it's funny. Again, when, I, when, when this first started, uh, there, we, we didn't have all the integrations and everything. Right? It was just a standalone application. So it was actually designed to be used initially without a CRM. It was later down the road that we started adding all the CRM integrations and lender integrations and measurement tool integrations that plugged into what the, the foundation of the application was. So if you don't use a CRM at all, or even if you use a CRM that we don't plug directly into, you can still use the application and have it um, send everything via email instead of directly to the CRM. Yep, and John, your question, does it work with Google Calendar? Yep. Yeah, so what it'll do uh, is tie into the calendar of the iPad, and you just basically tie that calendar in the iPad to any calendar you want. So you would just link your Google Calendar to the iPad calendar, and then you link Leap to that same iPad calendar, and it will communicate to that. Yep, so long and short of it, sure will. And then the last question, does it run on any other mobile platforms? We get this question a lot. So we natively built this into iOS, and there's a reason that we did that. Uh, a couple of them actually. So right now, Leap is only available on the Apple platform. So again, you can use this on your phone. However, contracts are one of those things that when you use it on a phone, it's just not gonna be able to resize itself in a way that makes it functional. So you can, you can build an estimate, you can build basically anything that you need, less the contracts if you're using your iPhone. If you're using an iPad, obviously you can do all of the above. If you're using an Android, unfortunately, it does not work on the Google Play or the Android platform. And the main reason why we decided not to do that is really twofold. Number one, from a data and a security standpoint, there's a reason why a lot of government institutions, et cetera, don't use the Android platform. When you create apps on the Android pl platform in the Google Play Store, one of the problems that you run into is there's not a lot of quality control. Anyone can upload anything. Apple, on the other hand, puts everything through a pretty intense vetting process. So the actual security requirements, et cetera, for that are actually far superior. Um, so one of the reasons why we did that is from just a, a straight security standpoint. So if, if we're going to be putting our data on that or if we're going to be putting our app on that platform, we want to make sure it's safe and secure because there's a lot of really important information <laughs> pushed through the application itself. Two is you look at the market share. So the market share for Apple devices versus Android devices, especially when it comes to tablets, iPads are definitely the majority of the market share. Um, the quality control is there. There's a massive difference between a Samsung and say, you know, just some random generic Google Android based software or Google Android based uh, tablet. So Samsungs are amazing. Not all of them are. The battery life is pretty variable. So we wanted to go with something that was going to be consistent. It was going to be really the, 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 the platform by which we could build an amazing software on. And, and that's why we chose Apple. So hope that answers your question. The good thing that we found is that the other, well, I guess the third thing, if you, if you will, there's a lot of folks that are like, yeah, well, my reps aren't that tech savvy. Well, guess what? Hand your grandparents an iPhone. They're going to figure it out hand them an Android, they're going to throw it against the wall and demand buttons. So really at the end of the day, there's, there's a massive difference also in the user experience and the user interface. Apples are really simple. They're really, really simple and they're really we, replicable. So We have another question about cost. 
Um, so yep. he says, how does cost work per user per transaction, or is it case by case per company? It's kind. Of, it is a per user per month fee, but it it varies per company. So uh, we don't like to go on that in these webinars because we like to dig in to show you exactly you know what the app will do, and then kind of gauge where you need to be, like what you're going to use in your company, and then we'll we'll go over the pricing um, from there. So it is a per yeah. user per month, just a bit regular software subscription model. Um, but we'll do a one-on-one -on -one demo and go over all that with that. Yep. We, we like to make sure that every single bit of functionality that's available within Leap fits your business. So we're going to learn about you. We're going to show you each one of the different layers, walk you through that experience of creating the estimate, taking it to a proposal, taking care of the financing, bring it through a contract, and then talk a little bit more about the integrations and some of the other features. So again, when we do the one-on-one -on -one demos, they're pretty in-depth. They take about an hour. Um, not the 45 minutes that we claimed on this one, <laughs> but again, we'll walk you through in about an hour and we can show you anything and everything. Our staff is really highly trained to give you that more consultative approach. They're going to look at this and decide whether or not this is a really good fit or not. You guys are ultimately the decision makers on whether or not you're ready to implement it. So that's how we, we approach the situation. We're really looking forward to, uh, to, uh, um, get into the weeds with you guys. Um, and then we have one last question. It says, uh, we have to provide the tables, right? Um, and by tables, tablets. correct me if I'm wrong. Tablets. tablets. Okay. Sorry. Tablets. Sorry. Yes. I swear I, I'm wearing my glasses. You can't read, James. So, you need some glasses. <laughs> I'm wearing my glasses. But anyway, the, the answer to that is, is yes. Um, you do need to provide the tablets. The cool thing is you can actually pick up those tablets pretty cost effectively. Yeah, um, I, I, Best I, Buy I will say, instance. Best Buy, I think, last I checked, had them on sale because right now they're getting ready to like transition the iPads. Like I think they're coming out, getting ready to come out with the new one. So that's when they put all the other ones on like big discounts. And we picked up a couple for our, our staff. Um, I think we got like three or four of them uh, for $279. So yep. I mean, that's like the cheapest. And that's with the Best Buy. Yeah, that's with the Best Buy care warranties and stuff like that. So you don't even need to use Apple Care. You can use Best Buy stuff. So yeah. there, there's other more cost effective ways to do this too. I've had a number of companies that we've worked with that are like, look, we really got to be cost effective with this. What's the cheapest way I can get them? Go on eBay. As long as they run iOS 11, you're good to go. Yeah. So there's tons of different ways you can do this to keep the cost down. We're always happy to walk through those with you guys. Um, you know, and there's a ton of different things that we can do. So like I said, we're going to be reaching out to each and every one of you guys. <laughs> Thanks for the reiteration <laughs> of the tablet. I love that in the question. <laughs> uh, ouch, that was a zinger. Thank you guys for joining today. I uh, really appreciate you taking the time. I know we went a little bit long, but again, this is a really hot topic simply because this is, you know, th this is, this is all stuff involving legal. So as you start to look at how you might leverage this in your own business, um, really take a look at the three things that we talked about. You know, is is this something that you know that, that, that's going to benefit you? Should you go digital, and what are the other parts of your business that are going to benefit from it? So, again, ask yourself those introspective questions. We're going to reach out to each and every one of you. If you're ready to go and you want to see a demo and you want to see how this is going to work in your company, give us a call. Go to our website, request that demo. Don't wait for us. Again, we're going to get in touch with you over the next the next day or two. Um, but feel free to reach out proactively, and we'll put you at the top of the list. Thank you so much for joining, Steve. Always a pleasure. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you guys, there's going to be recordings of this as well available. We're going to upload it to our YouTube channel uh, and send it out directly to the uh, to the to the group. Thank you so much for attending. There'll be more of these to come. Keep an eye out in your inbox. We're going to be promoting them over the next couple of weeks, and uh, we'll see you then. Thank you.